mortgage payment. I'll make your mortgage payment. Every month I do that, your credit's going to go up. Because right now, you're not making your mortgage payment, it's your credit's going down. And eventually, I'll refinance it, or I'll sell it, or I'll do something, and get the loan out of your name. And they say, great, how do we do that? What do we do? I say, you just sign this quick claim deed and give me your property. So that's what they did. I didn't have to get a loan. I didn't have to come up with a double payment. A lot of money. I just did a separate two, and they gave me the property. At the time they gave it to me, the property had three layers of roofing already. That's what the property was like when I got it. I got an insurance company. They came in there and said, yeah, we'll insure it. No problem. Away we went. The laws have changed since five years ago. If you go to an insurance company and you want to insure that house, they'll inspect it and go, no, it's got three layers of roofing. We're not going to give you insurance. If you try to buy the house, you can't buy it because no lender is going to give a loan on a property that can't get insured. This looked like, oh boy, big problem. I'm trying to sell it. I've got property here in town that I don't want to sell because we're at the bottom of the market. I want to sell at the top of the market and get a profit, not the bottom and take a loss, right? So I got back to the uh, lender or the uh, realtor and because I've got a couple offers coming in and I said, well, can't we just do a cash out of a check out of escrow for the roof? Let's, you know, have a check that's going to the roofing company, not to the buyer. Show the lender that it's going to be paid for and it's going to get a new roof. I'll pay for the roof if you give me a good deal on the property. We had one lender through FHA that said, no, our lender through FHA can't do that. It has to be fixed before. So that kind of shot that down, and they came in with a bunch of, you know, inspections and all kinds of problems, and I just said, don't want to deal with that. Another person came in, FHA lender, but this was a different loan company that said, yeah, we will take a check out of escrow after closing. So now we're uh, looking at a market in Oklahoma that's been doing this the whole time California and the rest of the nation has been doing that. And if you take a look all the way back to 2005, Five and six and seven is a peak here. I'm not sure, but what might be happening is in these places outside of California, Florida, Nevada, when those markets start to depress, the investors leave and go to places like here. So you can see when we had some of our peak moments in California, they were down because the investors were going, we're not going there, we're going where the equity is going up. As soon as the equity started going down in California, look what started happening outside of California. Okay, so this is one reason why it's a good idea to kind of spread out your portfolio if you're going to be doing properties, so that if one market's depressed, you can leave it alone and go back and sell in a market that's not. So they came back in. I got the property from the buyer that gave it to me. Their loan was paid down to about $49,000. When they purchased the property, they purchased it for this, but they had to come up with 20% down. So I got it for about $49,000. I've got an offer in right now. We're in escrow for $90,000. Actually, we're in for $88,000. But then when the roof or was it? No, they wanted me to pay some closing costs. And I said, sure, I'll pay closing costs. Just give me more for the house. You can have more that you don't have to come up with out of pocket. So they rose. They, they took the price of the house up to $90,000, and I came to the roof with some closing costs. And right now, the buyer's happy, the lender's happy, the realtor's happy, everybody's happy. It looks like it's going to go through. Okay? Who knows? But, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of uh, stuff to do over a course of five years. Here we're going to get into an example of something that turned out to be a major disaster. Okay, we had bulk REO dealers come through here. We've had about three different groups, would you say, Matt? Yeah. At least three different groups. This property I got from this one group in Ohio, the company is Easy Access Funding. Yes, bad news. Um, Michael Alexander was a contractor and Mark Tao is the uh, lawyer that was 
overseeing all this and signing the paperwork and collecting all the money in. And basically their deal was, we give you a property that if you choose category two or three, we will rehab it. It will be turned over to you habitable, meaning people can live there. And you got a great deal and away we go. And we even do our own title work, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. and when a, Volk REO dealer tells you that they do their own title work, that's the first red flag. Title companies are out there to help both sides, the buyer and the seller, to keep things fair. When a lawyer tells you we do our own title work, there's nobody on your side. It's one-sided. They're going to do whatever they do to get whatever they want to get. They couldn't even write up a uh, HUD-1 statement. They came back and said, well, our person that does that is in the She's having a baby or whatever their excuse was, and so I actually had to do the HUD-1, work with